Hi everyone, Renee here, and today's video is gonna be the first of two all about vitamin C, and today we're actually talking about the derivatives. C is kind of a broad marketing term, so we just have this idea that it's all the same, but actually it is not. There are different forms of vitamin C and they function differently. So ascorbic acid or l ascorbic acid is the gold standard for vitamin C. It is the reason why we actually have vitamin C products at all. It's because this ingredient has been proven, studied, and researched to have many benefits to the skin. It's a powerful antioxidant. It also helps with collagen formation. It's also great for hyperpigmentation and brightening the skin. It's got healing and reparative properties. It also helps with fine lines and wrinkles. And then there are the derivatives of ascorbic acid, which really kind of burst onto the scene last year in particular, I feel. Um, there were so many brands that were putting out their vitamin C serums or products using the derivatives instead of um, L-ascorbic acid. Probably one of the main reasons derivatives even exist is because ascorbic acid is just so unstable to formulate. A lot of the formulas that exist out there just have a very short shelf life of a few months. So the derivatives were developed in Japan to address these stability issues. Another reason would be because of sensitivity and irritation. Liquid vitamin C serums usually have to be formulated at quite a low pH in order for the ascorbic acid to be stable. Usually it's around 3 to 3.5, which can really cause irritation on some people, particularly if you have sensitive skin. So also, if you are acne prone or breaking out, um, vitamin C serums can definitely cause purging. I know for myself, when I started using l ascorbic acid serums, um, I purged for about six months. It was not fun. These are not direct forms of vitamin C. They require conversion in our skin into ascorbic acid, which is what our body recognizes. There isn't a lot of solid research yet about whether or not the derivatives can um, perform the same way as ascorbic acid, which is not necessarily saying that it is bad. There's a lot of um, skincare of the future using new technologies and new ingredients that don't have um, all the studies backing it up yet, but you know, it's still stuff that we love to put on our skin and vice versa. There can be a lot of research behind something like vitamin C, but it doesn't mean it necessarily works for your skin. So what's really interesting to me is that while derivatives, even at high concentrations, are not going to be as powerful as ascorbic acid, they do appear to have some very beneficial side effects that are really good for our skin, such as improved collagen production or evening of skin tone or skin brightening. So we're going to be looking at some of these side effects that these derivatives have and the formulas that I really, really like, and hopefully that'll help you determine what to go for. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate is water soluble, it's stable, and appears in some of the most beautifully hydrating serums. This is a really soothing ingredient and has actually been shown to work really well on skin with acne or skin that is breaking out. Derma Ease Vitamin C Concentrated Serum. This was a really lovely surprise. It's absolutely gorgeously hydrating. It's quite emulsive, actually. So this is something that I would apply during my normal serum phase, which is after hydrating toner. It's really soothing on the skin. It gives it that nice plumpness without the stickiness. Um, and it's also got a whole bunch of supporting uh, natural antioxidants as well, such as green tea, vitamin E, and vitamin A in the form of rosehip oil. Hydration-wise, it's the aloe vitamin B5, sodium hyaluronate. It's got a good amount of sodium ascorbyl phosphate. I don't know the exact percentage, but it, it is pretty high up on the, on the inky list. It's also got a very slight um, and very natural scent to it, which is, which is pleasant. Mad Hippie's vitamin C serum is beautifully hydrating. It's also full of antioxidants. Um, it's also got vitamin E, it's ferulic acid, but it's full of hydrators like hyaluronic acid, aloe vera, glycerin. It applies beautifully. Um, at first it's a little sticky, but then it just kind of um, absorbs and dries down immediately, leaving your skin feeling smooth and plumped and hydrated. This uses 10% sodium ascorbyl phosphate, and it's really not an overcomplicated formula. It's actually kind of nice and simple. There's a slight scent to this, which is not like a, a fragrant scent. Uh, it's not a bad one though. Wait, this is lightweight enough that you can apply it um, either right after cleansing or after first treatment essence. I personally use it right after cleansing and before hydrating toner. But you can also use this after the toner step. It's, it's all good. So while this is similar to the Derma E, this is definitely a more elegant application. It absorbs much faster, um, even though I feel like it's still a similar level of hydration that you get. It's more simple than the Derma E, which you know has a lot of beautiful plant extracts and oils. This um, isn't as 
robust. In Jordan that. Samuel Skin Hydrate Facial Serum. This is relatively newer to me, but I've been using it quite a lot. I love it. It is the most hydrating of the lot. This has no water in it. It sits in a base of just pure aloe. Coming out of the dropper, it's a bead that stays intact, but then when you apply it, it melts into the most hydrating, bouncy serum. There's a moment of stickiness and it completely dissipates in no time, leaving your skin feeling smooth, just super hydrated. I feel like this is just so anti-inflammatory. If your skin is feeling angry, this will just sort of take everything down. So THD, because I'm not going to say tetrahexyldexyl sorbate every single time. So this is the new superstar popular girl vitamin C derivative out in the market right now, it seems. Um, so many brands are using this in their vitamin C products. So this also comes with some of the most obnoxious marketing claims as well. Things like 50 times more effective than ascorbic acid. Um, that seems to be a common one out there. I don't really know where they're getting that from because there's no real literature that supports it. So I kind of feel like it. there's something missing in context. Maybe it's 50 times more effective at not oxidizing or turning orange. I don't know. But So it's really important to note here is if any of these products are marketed at 15 or 20 percent vitamin C, but it's using THD, that in no way equates to um, being equivalent to 15 or 20 percent L-ascorbic acid. In fact, it's more likely that less than 5 percent um, of ascorbic acid is being released, which is why the beneficial side effects that come from these derivatives um, are less likely to do with the um, ascorbic acid component. With skincare marketing, I just like to take it all with the big fist of salt. So this derivative has a bit of a fatty acid component to it. A lot of the products that contain this tend to be very creamy and very moisturizing. So I would say this is a great option for anyone who has drier or more mature skin. Also what's been found with this derivative is that it's particularly good at skin brightening and not so much overall brightening but even more effective at targeting the hyperpigmentation spots. So it can be really effective for spot treatment. I've actually found in my experience that um, the results can be very similar to using ascorbic acid. So if you have hyperpigmentation or melasma, this could be a really good treatment. So because this is oil soluble, this appears in a lot of oil serums, which you know I love. Of course, there is this one from Biosance. their squalane and vitamin C rose oil. So Biosance is the only EWG verified brand in Sephora right now, and everything in their line is based around their squalane oil, which is derived from sugarcane. It's a more stable and sustainable resource than olives. Personally, um, I find squalane to be a little bit more greasy, and it kind of is a little, um, takes a little longer to sink into your skin than a lot of other oils that I use. This, however, has a way more elegant application than their signature 100% squalane oil. It's just um, the texture is kind of thin. It feels more like a dry oil. It absorbs really quickly into the skin. Even though um, this does use squalane as a base, there are other things in here as it's an oil serum. Um, I think also the addition of Damascena rose extract just makes it really luxurious and kind of a joy during application. And then we have the Ordinary's Sorbol Tetraisopalmitate Solution, 20% in vitamin F. This is the same thing as THD. Vitamin F is a linoleic fatty acid. I explained this in my oil video. Linoleic fatty acids tend to be the type that are not so fatty. Um, they're actually great for oily skin. They're really balancing. This is um, an omega-6 oil. Again, the application, like for the Biosance, is just really nice because it just does not feel as oily or greasy as regular oils. It just sinks in really, really quick. It's a very comfortable layer to apply on your skin. If you're a fan of Zellens and you've always wanted to try their Power C drops, I can tell you that this is almost an ex exactly the same experience, at least it was for me. Right, so the next two products are really quite similar. I'm going to first talk about Sunday Riley's CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. So this uses 15% THD. It's quite a creamy serum. I would say it's even a little, maybe a little more creamy than even the Good Jeans, but it does remind me of the Good Jeans. You would use it in the same way. I generally do not prefer it in this form simply because it's harder for me to really sort of fit it into the routine the way I like my routine to be. I would use this after all the liquid applications and before oil or moisturizer. This has a lot of ingredients in it to make it a very effective serum. It does cheat, however, though, because it contains glycolic acid in it, which of course also helps with the skin smoothing, the skin brightening, all of that. So I personally don't prefer daily acid use. Um, 
especially if it's glycolic, no matter how small the percentage may be, it still will sensitize my skin. So yeah, so Peter Thomas Roth's Potency Power Serum was just way more suitable for me because it doesn't have any other active involved. This is chock full of antioxidants. It's got 20% THD as well as ferulic acid, vitamin E. It's also got some beautiful um, root extracts. This also has a nicer texture in my opinion only because it's a lot more liquidy. It's a lot lighter. It sinks in much faster. My skin definitely liked this a lot more than Sunday Riley's. So if you want a potent antioxidant serum that's just really gentle but still effective, especially if you have hyperpigmentation and spots, um, then this is a great option. And also, I mean, if you also want something that's just a little more emulsive, you can definitely smell the ferulic acid in here, but that's pretty much about it. This is gonna be heavier than your traditional liquid-based serum. So if you are normal to oily, then this could substitute as a light moisturizer. I feel like if you like this kind of serum, my personal recommendation would be this over this. Asorbyl glucoside is water-based, so this derivative seems to have similar collagen-boosting functions as ascorbic acid, although this hasn't been shown to have any great effect on skin brightening. The Ordinary's Asorbyl Glucoside 12% has a really lovely texture. Um, it is so hydrating, but it's got this like um, slippiness, and it leaves your skin feeling really kind of smooth. Out of all the derivative solutions that they offer, I would say texture-wise, this is probably my favorite. Although the question comes to mind, if we're just talking about collagen boosting, then there are probably other products that you can use that will be better at doing that, like, I don't know, copper peptides perhaps? I feel like this is good if you don't need the hardcore stuff yet, you know. So one of the most beautiful serums around is this one from FAMU. It's their Vital C. This is so luxurious. It contains 2% um, asorbyl glucoside, but there's something about the sum of all the parts of everything in here that just does something to your skin. It has niacinamide, centella asiatica, green tea, licorice root, vitamin E. I mean, just <laughs> a list of my favorites. It's just got the most beautiful hydrating texture that just dries down to a very smooth texture finish. It also has some natural um, jasmine and rose extract in here as well, which makes for probably the most euphoric scent, at least for me. When I use this, my skin feels plumper, smoother, the texture is beautiful, um, glossier, it's, yeah. Magnesium asorbyl phosphate is already considered kind of like a passe derivative, so sad. So this is most effective at overall skin brightening. It does a really good job of that, um, whereas the THD is good for like the spot treatments um, and targeting hyperpigmentation. This is great for just overall not so dullness. So this comes in cream form and it's legitimately very creamy. I mean, this is, this is a moisturizer. It's not a serum. It's, you would use this as a moisturizer, which again is not my ideal format, but for a very simplified routine, you use this as a concentrated um, moisturizer you're good. So another product that contains MAP that's not in moisturizer form, but comes in a liquid serum format is one from Youth to the People. I've not tried that yet. I really want to. It's a consideration for you guys. In fact, I feel like Youth to the People as a brand, their products are really focused and great for brightening. So I might've saved the best for last. A lot of you guys have been waiting almost a year for me to talk about this ethylated L-ascorbic acid. So what makes ethylated ascorbic acid so special is that it is the only form of vitamin C that is not pure ascorbic acid that does not require conversion into the skin into a form that works. The skin recognizes it as ascorbic acid and so it works similarly. To the body, it is identical and this is what differentiates it from all the other derivatives. The ethylated component also makes the ascorbic acid very stable in water. Over a period of six months, it would lose maybe 2% effectiveness, whereas regular ascorbic acid serums will lose maybe up to 80% in the same amount of time. That being said, both the products that I have tried, which is um, Hylamide C25 and Neod's ethylated L-ascorbic acid 30% network, neither of them sit in a base of water. These sit in ethoxydiglycol, which has been patented. Um, it is the only substance other than water that can solubilize um, ethylated L-ascorbic acid. Point is, if you do see this derivative in a base of water, it's still really stable.
I can tell you for a fact that after six months, this solution has not changed at all. When you first apply it, it's oily, but then it completely dries down into nothing, which I don't mind because it's very spreadable. So I can really feel it um, going on my face and then it just disappears. The scent is really something else. I wouldn't even begin to know how to describe it. it it's definitely not fragrant. It smells more chemical, but that also disappears. So in using this, after the first few days, I realized it's seriously very powerful. Um, in fact, um, my skin started looking really depleted um, because it was just too much. However, there was a noticeable difference in my hyperpigmentation. I mean, I'm not saying they were completely gone or anything. I just noticed that my skin got brighter. This is something I actually use every other day because it is quite strong. Out of all the derivatives, I feel like this has the same impact on my skin as L-sorbic acid. In fact, if you cannot tolerate ascorbic acid, then I would not use this. So an interesting fact about this and the reason why it's formulated at 30%, which is a very highly concentrated formula, it's to take into account our skincare routines that consist of many layers and the possible dilution. Now we can still get a real hefty dose even though there's a lot of other skincare going on. This also mixes really well with a lotion, oil, or cream. Um, that might be wise, especially in the beginning when you start off using this because it may require some dilution. So the Hylamide C25, other than there being a lower percentage, it's not just about the ethylated ascorbic acid. It's not as focused of a serum. It actually brings in other booster ingredients um, that increase like the effects of brightening and things like that. This is definitely a vitamin C treatment that is not as intense. I use both these products exactly the same way, which is after all my liquid applications and before my moisturizers. And also because these are relatively strong and I'm not going to use them more than once a day. Um, like I said earlier, I use them once every other day. I prefer to use them at nighttime. Whereas with all the other derivatives, most of these serums can be used twice a day. So the last product I'm going to talk about, I did feature in my latest skincare routine. It's a wonderful eye cream. It's Drunk Elephant's C Tango. So this contains five derivatives of vitamin C and she decided to go with derivatives instead of L-sorbic acid only because our eye area tends to be very sensitive and we really don't want acid going into our eyes. I definitely feel like this has had a brightening effect around the area of my eyes, which I mean, it, it is saying something because I am very skeptical when it comes to these kind of claims, especially with eye creams, but yeah. So I hope you found this helpful and are less confused about what is out there. I am not a chemist, nowhere close. What's important to me is whether or not and how a product works um, on my skin and then sharing that experience with you. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.